Hello, hello there, and welcome to Wellbeing Wednesdays. Today, we're going to be talking about managing fatigue after breast cancer, right? How that awful, awful, deep, relentless tiredness that doesn't even go away with a nap or a good night's sleep, no matter how much sleep you get. Right. Have you noticed that? Fortunately, when you have walked the challenging path of breast cancer, you know that the journey just, it doesn't just end when treatment ends, right? We think that, that when we ring the bell, the jam, we think that when we hear the words from our plastic surgeon, see you in three months, that we're done. And we're not. And what we're rarely told, I wasn't told either, is that actually the next stage of recovery starts after active treatment ends, okay? So, and this bone aching fatigue is one of the most common souvenirs that we get from breast, this breast cancer journey. But as always, I like to bring some good news to the table, right? Because managing post-cancer fatigue is possible. And I'm here today to walk you through it with some gentle yet effective strategies that can help you reclaim your energy and that zest for life, right? That get up and go that you feel might have got up and gone somewhere. Now, before we dive in, if we haven't yet met, my name is Karen Del Maestro. I'm on a mission to help 10,000 breast cancer survivors uncover the secret to building habits that withstand the roller coaster of life, the stress, the fatigue, and yes, even those sneaky chocolate cravings. Okay. So come along and journey with me as we dive in today to three ways to help you manage that terrible fatigue. Okay. Now the first one is redefining your relationship with exercise. I'm not even going to say exercise, actually. I'm going to change it to movement. I'm already reframing it and changing and redefining it, right? Defining your relationship with movement. And I can hear you. I can hear you saying to me, but you can barely lift your head off the pillow, let alone do something, some kind of movement or exercise. You're like, Karen, you must be nuts. And I know it might sound a little bit counterintuitive, right? But please hear me out. Before I became a health coach, which was well over 12 years ago, as I'm, I'm doing this video today, but I was a personal trainer for over 10 years. And I understand how getting your body moving can actually be one of your strongest allies in combating fatigue. But there's some, some caveats and I want to go through them with you because we do need to reframe our thoughts. We do need to think about redefining our relationship with exercise. So, so here are some top tips for you. Number one is to start slow. You do not have to run a marathon or hit the gym hard even if that's what you were doing prior to your diagnosis, okay? Give yourself permission to heal and recover before you start hitting the gym hard. Now, one of the ways that I like to think of this is, is you know, and we'll go into this a little bit more, but if, if you were talking to your best friend, and you saw them extremely fatigued, the way that you are right now, the way that you can't even describe to people because they just don't get it, right? Then why would we want to push? Why do we want to push? We actually want to step back and nurture and nourish ourselves in more ways than one, but we're talking about movement right here. So we're talking about taking baby steps and we're talking about giving ourselves permission to do that and to be okay with that. Because I know that your mind kind of gets in the way, right? It's like, but it's not enough. I should be doing more. Forward movement is better than no movement at all. 
progress, not perfection, progress. So something as simple as gentle yoga, restorative yoga, yin yoga, gentle yoga, slow walks around your neighborhood, or even some light stretching can kickstart your energy levels without overtaxing your body. Your body is tired because it's healing, it's recovering, going through the trauma of breast cancer, no matter the diagnosis. So if you were diagnosed with stage zero, diagnosed with DCIS, diagnosed with stage one, you've still heard those traumatic words. And I know often I've heard from people that they say, but it doesn't really count. Well, it does because you've heard those words and you can't unhear them. It counts. So be kind. And the, the key here is to listen to your body and adjust your activity level based on how you feel. Personally, I love Qigong. I love Tai Chi. You can find lots of videos on YouTube for them. Easy to find gentle movement. And it's learn to be kinder to your body, kinder to your mind as you go on this recovery, because where your mind goes, your energy flows. So the harder we are on ourselves, the more we beat ourselves up up here. I call that voice negative Nancy, by the way. No disrespect to anybody called Nancy, but it's about learning a kinder, easier way of being. And so listening to your body and adjusting your activity level based on how you feel. On the good days, maybe you push a little further. And on the tough days, maybe a few stretches might be just right. And being okay with that, not beating yourself up for it, being kind to yourself. The other thing I think it's really important is to make it fun, right? Choosing activities that you actually really enjoy. So if you love nature, consider short hikes. I have a client who was sharing the other day that she hates to sweat. She knows she should be moving. She hates to sweat and she feels guilty. But then when I'm through our conversation, we learned that she loves to garden and she can do that for eight hours. I'm like, hey, you're moving, you're bending, you're stretching, you're squatting, you're standing up. Like this is movement. And so some it's about finding something that you actually enjoy. So if the water suits you, maybe some swimming, like light swimming or some aqua aerobics in a warm pool, some you'll find that some hospitals have wellness centers with therapy pools or physical therapists that have therapy pools that are just that little bit warmer that encourage your body to just relax and come out of that survival mode that you've been in. The more you enjoy it, the less it feels like a chore and you're the more likely you are to keep at it, right? Kind of makes sense. So that's the first thing is redefining your relationship with movement. The second thing I want to talk about and the second way to manage fatigue is with nourishing foods. Eating well after breast cancer is about more than just avoiding certain foods. It's about actually nourishing your body with what it needs to regain strength and vitality. There are specific foods that help do this. And fatigue often sets in when our bodies don't have the right fuel to function efficiently. There is a level of fatigue. It's called breast cancer related fatigue. There's a baseline, but we're talking about the space that's above that and things that you can control to either add to the fatigue or help manage it and decrease it. This is what we're talking about here. And you have more control of those things than you realize, even if you're exhausted, even if you're exhausted, right? So embracing whole foods. What do I mean by that? Focusing on foods that are as close to their natural state as possible. So thinking fruits and vegetables, whole grains, grains that are actually whole, so brown rice, quinoa, those are great whole grains, lean proteins and healthy fats. We need fat, people. We need fat, good fat. I'm not talking about fried food. I'm talking about avocado, olive oil, coconut oil, your omega-3 fatty acids from salmon, things like that, right? Because these foods 
are packed with nutrients that can help boost your energy level and boost your overall health and well-being, which is what we want, right? We want to stay healthy. The other thing when it comes to eating well, and I kind of lump this in with this because it's about something that we do on a regular basis, hopefully, is staying hydrated. Now, sometimes what feels like fatigue is actually dehydration in disguise. So if you find yourself feeling hungry, actually have a drink first, right? So making sure that you're drinking plenty of fluids throughout the day. Water is best by a long shot. I've always got my bottle of water here. I'm almost done. Need some more. But herbal teas can be comforting and hydrating as well. You know, I'm a big fan of tea. I've normally got my cup of tea here and they are herbal. I drink herbal teas a lot throughout my day. The other thing to do when it comes to food and nourishing your body is a little bit of planning goes a really long way. Now, I know, actually, I don't even know how many times I've said, if I didn't have to think about what was for dinner every night, the amount of stress and energy that would take off your plate, right? You thought about that. And so planning, which we tend to do on a Sunday, we'll look at the week, we'll look at our appointments, we'll look at our schedules and see, okay, what night are we going to have time to cook? What night do we need something to reheat? Where do we need a quick meal? Doing that bit of planning ahead of time, number one, it helps with the food shopping, right? Because if you've got an idea of what you're doing, then you're not having to rush to the store. You're doing a big food shop once a week. But this planning also helps you avoid that energy dip, right? That comes from not eating enough regularly. So trying to eat small, balanced meals and snacks throughout the day to maintain your blood sugar levels is really key here. You want to avoid the high highs and the low lows when it comes to your blood sugar. You want to kind of keep it as as balanced as possible. Important when it comes to helping to lower our risk um, for recurrence. But it's also so relevant when it comes to your energy level. So again, small little balanced meals throughout the day makes a huge difference. You want to learn more about balanced meals, then stay stay tuned. I've got something coming for you at the end here today. My third tip on managing fatigue may feel obvious. These all may feel obvious, right? And the thing is, I like to keep it simple. I like to keep it easy. I know that when I was at that stage, just after treatment, I didn't have the bandwidth for anything complicated. And here's the secret. It doesn't have to be hard. And it doesn't have to be complicated. We do it to ourselves. I've actually found that the easier I keep things, the better I am at staying on track because it makes it easier. And ultimately, I think that's what we all want in life. We want healthy eating. We want our energy. We want our vitality. We want our, to enjoy our life. So let's make it easy, right? So the third thing is to rest and recharge. Because rest is just as crucial, if not more so, as activity when it comes to managing fatigue. Giving yourself permission to rest guilt-free. Your body has been through a lot. So has your mind. And we're holistic beings, right? if, If we're stressed out, if we're anxious, if we're emotional, these are things that also make you feel drained, right? You know when you're stressed out, you feel more tired. And this is what happens. It's okay to rest. Give yourself permission, please. It's so crucially important quality sleep, creating a bedtime routine that signals to your body it's time to wind down, just like you would with a child or a baby, right? We have a nighttime routine. It might be a bath and then reading a book, drinking a bottle, maybe a lullaby, maybe rocking for a little bit and going to bed, right? Believe it or not, as adults, we don't need the bottle or the rocking, but 
it's a routine that helps signal to our brain and our body, hey, sleep is coming. Sleep is coming. And our body loves that, kind of loves to know what to expect. Some keys here are, and this is a hard one, I know for me, and I suspect for you too, is to avoid screens, iPad, an hour before bed. I don't include TV in this because typically we're further away from a TV and it doesn't have the same kind of blue light effect on our brain. But avoiding screens an hour before bed, dimming the lights, maybe reading a book or listening to some soft music, and then trying to keep a regular sleep schedule because it actually helps to regulate your body's internal clock and it improves the quality of your sleep. Again, just like we did um, for those of you who are parents or maybe you have nieces or nephews or cousins, right? Family members who just do better. Even if we think of our dogs, right? They know there's a schedule. They go out before they go to bed and they just know they get to know the schedule. It's the same thing. We thrive with this. We, it's good if we can give ourselves that opportunity to do that. I am also a huge fan of power naps. Have been for years now. It's unbelievable what a short 20 to 30 minute nap during the day can do for you. It can feel incredibly rejuvenating. I don't know if you've ever had that this experience where around 2.30, 3 o'clock, you feel like you just hit a wall right? Maybe your brain's not working properly. Maybe things are taking longer to do than you feel that they should. Maybe your body is like, uh-uh, okay. And then that 20 minute little power nap with a nice snuggly blanket. I have an eye mask that I find signal is one of the signals to my body, right? Time for sleep. I put on an eye mask. It's a silky one, so it doesn't get hot really important if we're dealing with hot flashes and waking up and then having a cup of green tea no caffeine but green tea in the afternoon is a really great kind of pick me up to help your energy level to keep going now obviously we want to make sure that these naps are not too close to bedtime because it's going to interfere with your sleep but I find for me that that three o'clock between like Two and three thirty. If my, if I hit a wall during that time and I'm able to take a nap, great time to have that little power nap. The biggest key with all of this is to listen to your body. I call I go by the pronouns she and her, so I'm going to refer to my body as a, as she. She knows exactly what I need. Right? She's going to have days that are better than others. I'm not going to judge her. She's healing. She's recovering. And I want you to know that when you're feeling worn out, please grant yourself the grace and space to take it easy. Give yourself permission to rest. Resting is not laziness. Okay. It's not laziness. It's an essential part of recovery. And if you keep pushing, 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 you're just going to keep getting more and more tired. So rest is crucial in this part of recovery. So to recap, right, managing fatigue after breast cancer is a journey. All right. That, that's me being honest and transparent the way I always am. And it's okay to take it one step at a time. Because remember, Every little bit of movement, every nutritious meal or snack, every restful moment adds up to a bigger picture of health and vitality. Okay, so these are your three ways to start managing fatigue. Movement, gentle, gentle movement, nutritious food or snacks and rest. I know it sounds basic. I know it sounds like it would be common sense. But I also know that we have trouble dialing it back and giving yourself permission to take it easier. So if you're looking for more structured support or if these tips resonate with you, but maybe you're not sure how to start implementing them, then hop on over to 
my blog, karendelmaestro.com slash blog, and check out my four-week program called Resilient Routines. It is specifically designed for women like you who are ready to take back their energy and life and grasp it and live it to the fullest after breast cancer. In Resilient Routines, we focus on creating manageable, enjoyable routines. Specifically, we we work on nutrition a lot that caters specifically to your needs as a survivor. Right? That's my specialty. I have been where you are. I have walked that bumpy path and I can support you in this next stage of recovery. You do not have to travel alone. Okay? I am with you. And so hop on over to the blog. You should be able to just tap this video where you're watching. It should take you. If not, there'll be a link around the video to check out Resilient Routines. See if it's for you. And I hope to see your name inside because I would love to support you on this next stage of your recovery and help you discover the art. It truly is an art form. Of building habits that withstand the roller coaster of life with stress, fatigue, if your motivation is taking a hike, and even if you're having those sneaky chocolate cravings, this can help. Okay, that's it for today, guys. Again, I'm your host, Karen Del Maestro. Thank you for joining me for this Wellbeing Wednesday. And I hope that you start to implement these tips. Let me know in the comments. What are you going to try first? Maybe hang, I will see your name over in Resilient Routines, which is where I get to really support you when we get to travel this road together. Okay, bye for now, and I will see you next Wednesday.